BBC. I'm Jack Stewart. Now to Iraq, where Sunni militants spearheaded by the group ISIS have taken control of the northern cities of Mosul and Tikrit in a rapid advance. There are claims that the gains they are making are not just military, but also environmental. Much of the country is dependent on the rivers Tigris and Euphrates for water, both of which start their flow in areas controlled by the militants. The UN declared water a weapon of war just last month. Could we see it being used that way in Iraq, with either supplies limited, dams destroyed, or areas deliberately flooded? We asked two people who are experts in this field for their views. Dr. Mark Zaytun is from the School of International Development and Water Security Research Centre at the University of East Anglia in the UK. And first, Dr. Kaba Madani from the Centre for Environmental Policy at Imperial College London. Tigris and Euphrates essentially uh, have major tributaries in different countries in that part of the world, so they're considered to be transboundary river systems. And whenever we have transboundary river systems, uh, reliability of water deliveries would be put into question. So this system is shared mainly by three countries, Turkey, Iraq, and Syria, and the countries have gone through a lot of tensions over and discussions and negotiations over how to share these resources. So over 98% of the surface of water of Iraq is coming from these rivers. And essentially when there is development upstream, there are problems for Iraq, which is mainly a downstream player in this system. And Mark, what's the current situation? How secure is the supply of water coming down these rivers? Iraq is downstream, and that makes them vulnerable to whatever the upstream states want to do. And in th this point in history is really interesting, to say the least. It's a bad situation for Iraq now. Iraq completed its hydraulic mission, that is to say, its provision of water through large water infrastructure, you know, decades ago, and it's been doing it for thousands of years, of course, as ancient Mesopotamia. But more recently, the upstream states, in particular Turkey and also Iran, the tributaries to the Tigris River, both heavily engaged in big infrastructure projects, large dams and projects that will and have already disrupted the water supply to Iraq. So Iraq as a state, and in particular Iraqi farmers, very vulnerable to the upstream development, particularly so at this point in time when the country is so divided internally. And now we're actually seeing those internal divisions with ISIS actually, uh, according to some reports, trying to use water as a weapon. Using water as a weapon is nothing new. It's happened uh, every time it's, uh, it can be used as a weapon. The Ba'ath regime drained the Iraqi marshes famously, and it happens in most conflicts throughout the world, actually. I wouldn't be surprised to see water continued being used as a tool of war. Because these rivers uh, come through the north side of the country, which is the area that ISIS has the most control over at the moment. So I suppose it's logical to think that perhaps they have control over the rivers too. So there are reports, uh, I don't know how reliable they are, uh, about ISIS getting control over the Mosul Dam. And that's essentially the largest dam in Iraq and the fourth largest in the Middle East. Uh, it's important from the water supply point of view and also electricity. Uh, there are also reports that ISIS trying to develop popularity through giving cheap food and water to people and cheap electricity. So essentially this can be a tool to essentially threaten the, like, the Maliki's regime at, at any point and also developing popularity at a local level. So this is interesting because the 2013 report by the the U.S. intelligence community was suggesting that water could be a source of regional destabilization as well as a political tool or target for terrorist attacks. So we are not sure that this is what's happening exactly, but it can be a strong tool to establish some power and create some pressure. And also when we are talking about water, we're talking about food, we're talking about energy and all these because they're highly interlinked. So water is a tool to create power and getting bargaining position and developing some negotiation power. Mark, I think when a lot of us think about control of resources in Iraq, we immediately think of oil. It's interesting that water can be effectively used in a weapon in this way. And that's actually something that's recognized by the United Nations as well, isn't it? Yeah, certainly there's international water law codified in the UN Water Courses Convention, which has clauses which pertain to that and obligations on all states to cooperate. There's an important distinction that we should make between oil and water. 
let's say oil is certainly an object of war, and wars will be fought over oil, and indeed the Iraq war was chiefly over oil. Water is not so much an object of a war, but certainly can be used as a tool of war. But as we've said, in, in, in the control of the Mosul Dam, then that, that's a great case in point. But even then, it's not that easy to control. It's, it's really not a question of like turning on or off a pipeline valve, for instance. You need a lot of capacity. You can't just stop a river completely and, and try a whole river out because the water would back up behind the dam. So it's, it's not that simple. It's not quite as uh, acute or a, a tool of war as is oil, let's say. This Mosul Dam is on the River Tigris in the, the north of the country. Are there other important dams or bits of infrastructure that could potentially fall under control of ISIS as they move down through the country? There are some other dams on the Euphrates downstream, uh, closer to Baghdad and on the Diyala River and what have you. Like I said, I don't think ISIS taking control of each of these bits of infrastructure will automatically give it some leverage and just keeping the services or keeping the river and the infrastructure running as they are, they will gain popularity amongst the people. I would say more than they can actually put pressure directly on uh, the regime they're, they're trying to topple. Dr. Mark Zaytun there from the School of International Development and Water Security Research Center at the University of East Anglia in the UK. And also Dr. Kave Madani from the Center for Environmental Policy at Imperial College London on the possibility of water being used as a weapon in Iraq. They do